what's up guys today we're going to be addressing a problem with the 2007 grand prix and it's a pretty common one in w bodies so let's hit the intro and we'll get right to it so the issue today is on this car and what we've got going on is when you drive around for a while the temps don't stay where I want them to stay. It has a 180 degree thermostat in it. And when you're going down the highway, for the most part, it'll stay at 180 degrees. Once you're driving around town or you have to sit in traffic for very long, it will creep up to 195-ish. And that's with the fan temps set lower too. So it's not the fan issue. Um, this makes me think that it's likely that we have a partially stopped up radiator because it's just not as efficient as it should be. But also the trans temp in the same circumstance is creeping up. I'm seeing as high as 210 degrees, which is more than I want. So we could probably just put a radiator in this and fix the majority of the problem. Probably not the transmission temp problem though. But I'm going to do the reasonable thing. And we're going to be putting this ZZP all aluminum double thick radiator which you can kind of see in here but we'll look at it more later we're going to be putting that in for the radiator and we're going to be installing this true cool transmission fluid cooler and just because we're going to be putting some uh, silicone radiator hoses on too we'll look at all that later too but the first thing that we've got to do i've got the car up on ramps so i can get under it a little bit easier the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get this radiator drained and we're going to get this front bumper off. You don't always have to remove the front bumper to do what we're doing today, but especially with these newer Grand Prix, because they've got that under tray under the front, having the bumper off will make trying to mount the trans cooler a lot easier. So that's what we're going to do. And we run into our first problem. The drain shock is stuck. I went under the car to try to open that up to let it drain. That didn't work, so we're going to go to plan B. I went ahead and pulled the upper motor mounts and dog bones off. We're going to go ahead and pull this hose first, and we're going to work our way down, and we're just to, going to, when I get the fans out and stuff, we're going to pull the lower radiator hose and drain it that way. But in the meantime, I've got a couple little hoses here and there I've got to get pulled off and uh, we'll start making some room to get these fans out. Okay, so I took both of these mounts off up here, which were just a single 10 millimeter. Then I took this upper radiator hose off to get it out of the way and pulled this back, which of course broke, but that's okay. I can secure that another way. So the next thing we're gonna do is we get a 10 down here, a 10 in the middle and a 10 over there on the side. Then we can start working on seeing whether or not I can get these fans out of here. And now the fans are out. It definitely took two hands to do that, so I couldn't do a whole lot of filming. But basically, all you got to do is take this wiring harness loose. It'll actually come up with the fans for the most part because it's got this much slack in it. So you can kind of just wait and unhook it once it's out if you want to. But, uh, I had to take that trans line loose to get the fans out. And then I just had to do a lot of wiggling and stuff to get it around this other stuff. But it's out now. So now we're gonna move the drain pan over here and we're gonna pull that lower radiator hose and let this coolant drain. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do, I've got to pull this bolt to separate the AC lines from the radiator and I've got this lower trans cooler line I've got to do then we're going to pull the radiator forward and I'll try to show you how we're going to take the condenser off if I've got space so let me do this first and we'll see what we can do one thing I did do to make things a little easier was I popped the top of the air box lid completely out took the air box and pulled it this way just enough to leave some room for the radiator I should be able to get it out with just that. Okay, and the radiator is out. 
The trick to this is going to be right here. When you go to pull the radiator, this condenser is sitting in grooves right here on the back of the radiator. So you have to lift it up, push it back, then wiggle the radiator out from around it. So we got that done. As you can see here, we just got an empty hole. The next thing we got to do is I've got to decide where the cooler lines are going to be going. And I'm going to have to decide what we're doing there. So I'm going to take a minute off camera to figure that out and we'll be right back. So I have decided that pretty much the next thing I'm going to need to do is remove this bumper because I'm going to need access to the front here to mount the trans cooler and I'm going to do the trans cooler and stuff uh, before I put all the radiator stuff back which don't worry we're going to look at parts in a minute but um, so to get this off headlights need to come out first then you take all of these off which just the center pops up and then they pull out so that's not a big deal you've got a 10 mil nut right here actually that's a bolt yeah there's a bolt and a nut right here that you have to take out that you can get to easily through the headlight hole there's another one back here and then there's a bunch of small bolts i'm hoping you can see right there on there and along the bottom and then the whole fascia should just pull off in one piece okay all the bolts are off for this now now most of this is really easy just go along the edge of the bumper pull everything you see these are a little harder these two are easiest to get to from down here from through the headlight hole this one is a big pain in the butt especially with the tire on if you take it off it's a lot easier but you can still get to it just pull this fender liner out till you can pull it back and the other hole is right up there so now we're just going to pull this bumper cover off figure out where we're mounting this uh cooler okay so after pulling that off and pulling this little cover right here off this is what you're going to be greeted with not a lot of space to mount anything and a whole lot of plastic everywhere so i'm thinking at this point the easiest place to mount it's probably going to be up behind one of here so you've got like a nice some nice airflow but i think to get that mounted i'm going to need to probably take this off but i'm not 100 percent sure about that yet so i'm going to look around a little bit more decide what the best course of action is and then i will update you guys all right upon further inspection i decided to remove the piece of plastic that goes across here and comes up to here because it was shrouding a good portion of this and i just couldn't get in there so with it out of the way it's just a matter now of figuring out where the lines are going to run, run and how i'm going to mount it okay so after much deliberating this is what i've come up with i took the old lines cut the rubber let me put you guys down in here so you can see it i cut the rubber there and used some 5 16 straight uh, hose barb fittings to join them to the new rubber which runs over here right beside the condenser comes out in loops right here that way i can just cut it to whatever size i need it once i figure out where that's going to go so that is basically that i'm going to clamp those in and then I'm going to probably go ahead and put the radiator back in so we can get the spacing for everything right and get the lines run where they need to be. And then we'll work on mounting the cooler. Okay, so at this point, let's just take a minute and look at some of the parts we've got here. This is the transmission cooler I'm going to try to use. This is the part number. And uh, it's going to be big to fit in that space but we'll see what we can do there these are the radiator hoses we're going to be using the ZZP uh, urethane ones and then down here is the big double core radiator if we can go ahead and pull that out and here it is unboxed as you can see it has all the same fittings as the factory one it does change this out to a different style of cap 
but otherwise it is the same. Look how thick this one is. Then look at the stock one. Way different. So this should do quite a bit better job of cooling everything. So I'm going to go ahead and sit this in next so that I can work around it and see what room we've got to run these lines. And uh, then I will update you guys again. Okay, so here is the new radiator sat in. Uh, the next thing I'm going to need to do, uh, I decided to use the stock hose on the bottom because to get the top of the hose off correctly, especially with the spring clamps, we're going to have to remove the ICM bracket. And I just don't need to do that right now. But I do have another job coming up soon on this one that I am going to have to remove that bracket. So I'm just going to do the radiator hose then. But I am going to go ahead and swap the top one. And then here are my transmission cooler lines, which are now flexible and can be pushed completely out of the way of the fan. So that's fine. And they'll run through to here. So we got to mount the cooler still. But the radiator's in and fits nicely and looks pretty good. Okay, took a break, came back, messed with some stuff. This is what I've got for the transmission cooler mount. What we've got going on here, if you can see, the hoses are connected. I've got, I took two of the brackets and bent them here to make standoffs so this would sit in this pocket a little bit. Use the other bracket right there. Then I made another bracket down here to hold the bottom. So it is very solid. It does not move at all. I don't have to worry about it banging around. The radiator still has plenty of room to sit as far back as it wants to and it won't hit it. So we are looking pretty good. The only thing I'm a little bit unsure about, I may redo this connection right here because I'm not 100% on the, uh, the unions that I used. And I mean, they'll probably be fine, but I would rather be 100%. So we're gonna mess with that some more probably. And then I've got to start putting stuff back together. So I will check back in with you in just a minute. I can't even remember at this point if I said I took this header panel off or not. But uh, it's really easy to get off. And once it's out of the way, you can get into this a lot better. And all you have to do is there's a bolt here, here, here. And then the same ones there. Then these little eights right here that you don't even have to take out. You just back them out and it comes right off. So it's really, really easy. Now that we're about to work on putting the fans back, I will tell you this piece, which normally the top bolt for the fan goes into, will not fit this extra wide radiator. So that's going to have to be thrown away and you can just bolt it in by the sides. So that's fine. Now, I'm just going to try to get these fans back in here, push these lines back out of the way and get that bolted back up. Okay, and the fans are back in. Right down here is where the lines are run. I had a hard time getting it past them, but now that they're pulled up, they're all sitting on the outside of this. It doesn't look like they're going to rub anything, so that looks fine. I've got it bolted back in on the two sides, which should also be fine. So we are now ready to put the mounts back, and the radiator is officially all the way in. So next problem, and this is something I'm running into a lot with this radiator. So I did not run into this problem when I did the aluminum radiator on the 99. So this is apparently not always an issue, but on these 04 plus radiators, this nipple was the wrong size. So I had to go to a worm drive clamp so I could clamp that hose down to get it to fit. The lower radiator hose uh, outlet on the radiator was not the right size. So I had to go to the same kind of clamp so I could squish that hose down to make it fit. And then here I'm doing the upper and once again, this is not the right size. Look, it just, it's loose. It just falls right off. So I have to switch to a worm drive plant clamp. The problem is these aren't really designed for worm drive clamps. They're designed to have spring clamps, which don't fit well in here because you can't get anything to them to tighten them down. So that's one area that for sure needs some quality control on ZZP's end is I don't know why they couldn't make these the right size to fit the hose. But that's where we're at. Uh, I think I'm going to try to move the air box and hope that maybe I can get to it from the back side to tighten it. If not that, I'm going to have a serious problem, but I'm going to try that and we'll see what happens. Okay, so now we've got the bumper just sat back up here with a few pins back in it and a couple bolts to hold it up. 
this will show you kind of what it looks like you really can't see it at all hardly from the front of the car but it is in there uh, the next thing I'm going to do before I put everything back is we're going to put coolant in it we're going to get it back to where I can crank it we're going to crank it up bleed the cooling system and uh, let it run for a few minutes and make sure I don't have any leaks then if all of that is good I'm just going to throw the rest of it back together so this next part I'll probably do mostly off camera but that's basically what I'm doing okay so we are back together and running everything is topped off the next thing I'm going to do is we're going to take it for a long drive see what kind of temperatures we can get the goal here is to hopefully not see much of anything over 180 degrees so I'm going to take that drive and I will get back to you guys got back from the test drive and this time around it stayed other than one little hiccup which I think was some air still working its way out it stayed around 180 degrees the entire time we drove it for maybe 20 minutes or so and I kept the speeds low so it didn't get a lot of airflow across the radiator still did not overheat and the transmission never got above 152 so that is considerably better than what it was doing so I think we've definitely fixed that. So I'm, I will report back though if anything is any different once we uh, get to drive it a little bit more, take it on some longer trips, that kind of thing. But overall, I would say my review of these parts, the ZZP radiator is about as good as their sixth gen radiator, but it doesn't fit quite as well. That's the only problem. If they would just make the inlet and outlet a hair bigger, and the little tube at the uh, cap a little bit bigger, everything would fit a lot better. But other than that, it fit fine. And uh, the cooler, which was a true cool uh, transmission cooler, I gave you the part number, I think, earlier. Um, that seems to be doing its job too. And it fit where it had to go pretty well. So I'm pretty happy with that overall. So I think everything was a success. Uh, I will let you guys go from this one. Make sure you drop this video a like if it was helpful at all. Uh, make sure you're subscribed and also and I haven't mentioned this in a while make sure you hit the notification bell Because with YouTube if you don't sometimes they still won't tell you when I upload and uh, a lot of you are also still not subscribed So subscribe if you haven't subscribed. I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching and peace